Hey guys, Youngblood with you. What I wanted to do today was actually talk a little bit about Operation Pitchfork and Star Citizen, primarily because it's been kind of revamped into the public's eyes as it hit its third year anniversary. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with that, what Operation Pitchfork is, it's essentially kind of a vengeance mission, a player-driven mission, to eradicate the Vanduul from Vanduul-controlled space, whether that be the Orion system or actually moving all the way into Vanduul, um, you know, held territories and actually ending up getting to a point where eventually they can just take over the home world, kill all the ships, um, and there's a couple goals behind it. One is to have fun, one is to, um, you know, in lore, have some player-driven history that's created as part of it. Um, you know, it's also going to be sort of a stress test for the servers in a way. There's some different benefits that they actually have, but what I want to really talk about more than anything is the chances of success for Operation Pitchfork. Now, there's not going to be a server wipe, at least that's last we heard, going from beta into launch. So any losses that you take in this operation are going to be actually be pretty significant. Now, if you've got LTI, great, you're going to have your ship come back. Or if you have standard ship insurance, you'll be getting that back. Um, but let's just talk a little bit about this. So outside of just other systems, we do know that the Vanduul homeworld is expected to be surrounded by something like 10,000 ships. And that number may have been 100,000. I don't remember either way, but there was a lot of zeros behind it. So if we talk about the real core successful mission of Operation Pitchfork, it's to eradicate the Vanduul homeworld. So in the old days, the chances of success before are none. And I mean, we could even say that to where we stand today. You know, we're expecting instant sizes of, where we were expecting instant sizes of around 100 players. Today, we get about like 20. So when we start talking about that, Whenever people arrive, they're going to all be in different instances, meaning that every single instance of player that's arriving at the Vanduul home planet is going to be facing 10,000 ships. So that's 100 players versus 10,000. You know, that's a difference of like a thousand times factor. So basically, the chances of success there are nil. You're not going to be able to go in. You're not going to have superior numbers. And on top of that, you're not just talking about size that are going to continue to come in at a slow pace, kind of like you do in Vanduul Swarm you're going to have them all there at the same time, which presents a very real problem. Now, things can change just a little bit when we start talking about the goals of what Chris is trying to build with this, and they're talking about the new net code and the new game codes that they're developing, and they have hopes of actually getting up to about a 1,000 ships per instance, or players per instance. That opens up a slight slight chance of success of Operation Pitchfork. Um, you know, if you're talking about 1,000 versus 10,000, well, if the player skill is significantly better than AI, then yeah, I think you've got a realistic shot. But you also have to look at what's going to be out there. You know, are we going to be able to, in a 1,000 person instance, actually be able to bring 1,000 Idrises? Probably not. It's probably going to be limited based on, um, you know, different factors. You know, number of players on board, um, if, those, if those ships have their own internal instances, because that thing makes it a little bit easier. So, you know, if you've got, you know, 900, hundred fighters and 10 Idrises, well, that may work out, but we don't necessarily know. The problem is you're going to be down a significant factor. And yes, 1,000 versus 10,000, you're talking about a 10 times difference. And if you think about Vanduul Swarm as an example, then yeah, that's probably a fairly realistic goal. You could probably do that, but I think at the most, you end up getting um, like eight or nine or ten different uh, Vanduul that are attacking you at any given point. So that, that, I guess that ratio kind of adds up. But the AI is going to be getting better. We all know that Vanduul Swarm is easy right now. And it, they're going to continue to improve and be better pilots. And especially if you start talking about who's defending the Vanduul homeworld, it's not going to be the little scavengers that you see in Vanduul Swarm. It's probably going to be a lot of their aces. So there's different things that you're going to have to consider. It's not just going to be size and glaives and blades. It's going to be void bombers. It's going to be king ships. It's going to be their version of the Corvette. They are going to have a mixed fleet that's going to be causing a lot of problems for you. There may also be potentially, you know, uh, uh, satellites that have weaponry. There may be planetary weapons that can engage you in space. There is going to be a boatload of missile spam going on because the Vandal love doing that. So, there's a lot of different potential outcomes that come from this, and the overall probability for success is really, really, really low. Now, you know, you, there'll probably be early success. You know, if you move into Orion, you may be able to eradicate Orion. You may even be able to take the next system. But it's probably going to get progressively harder to move into Vandal-held space without facing more and more and more opposition from them. During that process, your fleet's also going to be dwindling. Now, could we then funnel more people into the instances? Yeah, you're going to continue to kind of see things co coincide and work with you to a certain extent, but there's probably a point of diminishing returns there. 
So there's a couple different outcomes here. You know, one is victory. Uh, it could potentially happen. I think that's incredibly low, um, primarily because I don't think that CIG is going to want to say that something that's going to persist into launch, I don't think they're going to want to let the antagonist, the primary antagonist of the game, be wiped out for life. You know, the, the Vandal are going to be used in game as a consistent threat. They're going to constantly be something we need to watch out for. There will probably be additional races that are added that become problems, as well as player-driven uh, communities that are going to be problematic to normal, uh, lawful players. But the Vandal are always going to be there. So the chances of them being eradicated or being allowed to be eradicated by players before we even hit launch, I think is a slim to none opportunity. Now, how that ends up happening, um, you know, it could be that CIG is going to pre-program reinforcements ready to join the fight. So if you're attacking the homeworld and there's another system that's beyond the homeworld, they may call in all of their forces to come back up. So if you start out with 10,000 ships, that may end up doubling or tripling by the end of the fight. You know, it may also just be an unlimited number of total ships to fight. You just get in and battle as long as you can, but, you know, there's probably going to be something that's going to prevent you from actually being able to wipe them out completely. Another possibility outside of success is going to be just that the server craps out. Bringing a thousand people into an area where you're supposed to have something like 10,000 NPCs is going to be a real strain on the server. So even if we do get to the point where we have their thousand person instances, you're going to be really limited based on what the system can actually do. And I think it'll be interesting to see how it actually performs, but I think we all have to assume that this is going to be early in the game. This is going to be the first really massive test of what this, the system is capable of doing. And there is a high probability that it just craps out. So I know I'm also, speaking of crap, kind of crapping on um, Operation Pitchfork. I don't want it to sound like that. I think Operation Pitchfork is a really interesting, it's a really exciting opportunity, and I think it's something I'll probably end up participating in. If for nothing else, the videos of it should pretty, be pretty epic. Um, but I wouldn't say that anybody should go into Operation Pitchfork really feeling like they've got a good opportunity for success, because it's really not going to be there. I'm not saying it's possible or impossible, but unlikely is the word that I would use. So if you guys have plans or how you're going to kind of go about actually making this happen, you know, for those of you that have organizations that are going to be participating in Operation Pitchfork, I would love to see what y'all plan on. Um, I would also like to know if you guys have come to fact, come to terms with the fact that you're facing, um, you know, almost a uh, certain death, um, that the chances of success are incredibly slim, um, or if you are actually optimistic. And if you're optimistic of success for some reason, please tell me why, because I think a lot of of us just assume that this is going to fail, but getting information from the, those of you that have been more involved and discussing this topic of conversation for a long time could be really interesting for the rest of us. So that's going to be it for this video. Um, stay tuned for more coming at you soon. Um, there's going to be an inbox video coming up probably tomorrow, and then either Sunday or Monday I'll have up a uh, Should You Buy Polaris video, which is pretty exciting to think about. So um, that's it. Have yourselves a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.